Now, let's review some vocabulary related to electricity. Current, the flow of electricity through a conductive object. Amperage, the measure of electric current flowing. You might equate it to the gallons per minute with which you deliver water to a fire. Voltage, the measure of the force used to push the flow. Similarly, this is the pressure with which you deliver water, probably measured in pounds per square inch. Resistance is the opposition to electric current flow, and we measure it in ohms. Our final term is potential, the electrical difference between two points. Potential is what causes current to flow from one point to another. To understand this concept of potential, let's think of the ripples you see when you toss a pebble into a pool of water. Waves flow out in a circular pattern, and the ripples get smaller and smaller until they reach the point where there is no difference between the ripple and the water surface. Electricity flows in much the same way. The electric charge flows from the point of contact, decreasing as it completes its circuit in search of ground, or the point where the electric charge is neutral or the potential is zero. Now, think of the ripples in the pond as each having a different voltage. That's called step potential. Electricity will always take the shortest path or the path of least resistance to ground. And you want to avoid becoming part of that path to ground at all costs. Remember, electricity travels at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. At that speed, our reflexes simply are not fast enough to avoid serious injury. We'll talk more about this later. Just remember, Keep your feet together at the same voltage so that the electric current won't use you as the path to ground. Also, sometimes electricity almost seems to create its own path to ground. Much like lightning, the electrically charged particles can use the air as a path of least resistance for short distances. When a current seems to jump from one item to another, from one potential to another, this is called arcing. Because of this phenomenon, it's important for you to remember that minimum safe distance or minimum clearance. This means that you must keep your rescue equipment, particularly ladders, booms, and other metal objects, a minimum of 10 feet away from energized objects. Greater distances, up to 35 feet, are needed at higher voltages. And remember, you can't tell by looking at a power line or a facility how much power it is carrying or even if it is energized at all. And one final note, always consider an electrical facility energized and dangerous unless a power company employee specifically tells you that the equipment has been fully de-energized and is safe to approach.